Don't you know it's rude to sneak up on someone in the woods? You weren't. Yeah, sure thing, stranger. Okay, fine, you weren't. But what are you doing out here in the middle of nowhere? Um, are you a camper too? No? Then why... Oh, you're staying in the cabin by the lake. Oh, awesome. I've actually gone by that place a few times when I've been out on a morning hike so I can watch the sun rise over the water. It's a beautiful place to stay. Yeah, I'm on a bit of a spiritual retreat. You know, getting back to nature and all that. Sleeping under a sky full of stars. Getting away from the chaos and pollution of the big city. How about you? You're a writer. <laughs> uh, I know this is always the follow-up question, but I gotta ask what kind of books you write. Thriller novels. Okay, that's pretty awesome. I love horror movies and a good scary story, but I need to start reading thrillers too. If you have any recommendations, I'd love to hear them. Wait, wait, wait. That lakeside cabin is so far from here. How'd you end up in my neck of the woods? You got lost on your hike. <laughs> Don't worry, you're far from the first to get all turned around out here in the woods. I got a bit lost myself when I first came here. Thankfully, you found me and not a bear or a wolf. I've been out here for a few weeks, so I've gotten to know the area pretty well. You ask nicely, and I'll help you find your way back. On the condition that you let me charge my phone at the cabin. I may be on a retreat, but I need to keep my phone ready in case of an emergency. The reception out here is awful, though. <laughs> there we go. We may be far from the city, but some basic manners are still expected. Let me just get my backpack and we'll get going. Oh, I'm sorry. So rude of me, speaking of manners. I forgot to ask your name. Well, it's lovely to meet you. I'm Susan. Susan Prescott. Come on, let's get you back in one piece. Thanks again for letting me chill here for a bit. My phone charges quickly, so I'll be out of your hair ASAP. Promise. But knowing me, I'll be out of battery again in record time. I've got so much reading to catch up on. Oh, and before you say anything, I know I should be on this whole digital detox or whatever you want to call it if I'm out here in the woods, but I've been dying to see if there's any news articles about the mess surrounding the Heroes Guild. Yeah, my disgust was pretty obvious, wasn't it? I'm not a fan of them in the slightest. Why? They... They do more damage than good. They prioritise only heroes with flashy powers and get away with letting civilians die on their watch. Exploit people who don't have the power to stand up to them and they're blinding presence overshadows all other lights in the sky, like the sun's radiance blocking out all the stars around it. <sighs> Sorry, I know we just met, and I don't mean to dump all of this on you. Shit, please don't tell me that you're a fan of theirs, otherwise I'm going to get super embarrassed. <laughs> oh, that's a relief. I know a lot of people love them, and I know they've done some good things in the past, but it feels like nowadays the word superhero sounds, I don't know, polluted? It's thrown around so much and casts a huge shadow over the rest of the world. If it's not too personal to ask, do you have any powers? Or are you like 75% of the rest of the world, which is 
totally fine, by the way. There's a ton of people out there who don't have that mutation yet, and there's a handful of people with small, mundane powers who have no interest in becoming heroes. No powers? Ah, oh, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, I have a power, but I don't like to talk about it if it's all the same to you. Nothing weird, I promise, it's just misunderstood. Thanks for understanding. Whenever someone says they have powers, most people want to see it in action. But I don't like being treated like an animal in a circus. Like those pompous peacocks at the guild. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just itching to check for any news about... Uh. Wait. Is that what I think it is? That's a copy of Out of the Shadows Surviving a Villain. The, the tell-all story about Night Angel and the civilian they rescued. Well, yes, rescued and then imprisoned, but you've read it too? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Your copy is in near new condition. Can't say the same for mine. I read it so many times, it's fallen apart, and I can barely keep it taped together with duct tape. So I got a digital copy on my phone, and I'm rereading it. Not a fan of ebooks? Hmm. Me neither. But at least this copy won't fall apart after a few dozen more turns of each page. Hmm. You strike me as one of those old souls. You're so generous and sweet, and love cozying up with a good book like this on a rainy day. I know that, because I did the exact same thing when I got my copy. <laughs> I just... I just find Night Angel... So fascinating. I follow all the threads about her that I can find online. She's one of the strongest members of the guild, but is the only internationally renowned hero that has no social media presence. She's better than that anyway. Like, don't get me wrong, I love this book, and getting to finally hear more about this incredible, mysterious hero. But do you feel like this is a bit over-sensationalized, or exploitative. You know, these kind of misery memoirs that are page after page of trauma and unflinching detail. It feels like some parts of it were made to sound more horrific to sell more copies. Like, even the title, Out of the Shadows, Surviving a Villain. She's... <sighs> Night Angel is not a villain. She's just misunderstood. She sees the world differently, and this book tears her apart for it. Like, this makes no sense. In chapter 12, putting poison in her beloved's food and drink makes no sense. Why would she try to dim or snuff out their beautiful light inside? Besides, it came out that the civilian she rescued actually has powers and is now under the protection of the Heroes Guild. Those of us with powers, our souls, they don't shine like yours do. To me, it, it feels like our powers twist us up from the inside. But not wonderful, ordinary people like you. No. You, you shine. Sorry, I went off on another rant. I didn't mean to... Huh? Uh, yeah, the... Little Star, in this book, is now under the protection of the Heroes Guild. It was all over the threads the other week. Uh, here, I can show you, if you like. Can I borrow your laptop? Thank you. Oh, uh, put in your password. I promise I'm not looking. Thank you. Hmm. You have surprisingly good Wi-Fi for a cabin by a lake. Um. Hmm. Okay. Um, here. here it is. You see that person being led into the building with the security around them? That's them. The little star that everyone's talking about. Apparently they're under witness protection or something. 
in case any villains tried to target them to exploit their new powers. No one's seen them in a few weeks. But... Now this is where things get interesting. But a day or two ago, something strange started happening. Oh, uh, sorry, I don't mean to go down this rabbit hole, but I figured since you write thriller novels, you'd be interested in hearing more? Show you? A uh, sure thing. Oh, shit, they deleted it. That's what screenshots are for. <laughs> Can you pass me my phone, please? And it's fully charged. Ah, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> so I might be a little obsessed with this case, and I noticed some strange replies to threads about Night Angel and this... Little Star, as they're apparently called. All posted from new accounts with weird usernames, saying strange, cryptic stuff. Like this. Only in true darkness can true light shine through. And here, another user posted. Through blood and shadow and the ecstasy of pain can a soul truly shine brightly. It's... it's just so fascinating, isn't it? I can't shake the feeling that... that these were posted by Night Angel herself. No one's heard from her in months, and the way the book ends, it leaves it on a cliffhanger. No doubt to keep people hooked for a sequel. <laughs> but... she's still out there. I just know it. Oh, oh shit, it's getting dark. Yeah, I should probably head back to my camp. Yeah, I'll be fine getting back on my own. I'm not scared of the dark, but it's still dangerous in these woods at night, and I don't want to lose my way. But hey, let's swap numbers in case one of us gets lost again. Great. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of your night in peace. But I'll be around for the next few weeks, so if you want to take a break from writing the next bestseller, then you know where to find me. <laughs> you take care, okay? I'll see you later. If you enjoyed this ASMR tale and want to become one of the incredibly kind souls featured here, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. To access my Discord server, attend my monthly live narrations, and enjoy other perks, click on the Patreon link below. You can also catch me live on Twitch every Friday and Sunday evening, so be sure to drop by sometime. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe, and stay wicked and wonderful.